Hello IPX, welcome to our Geno's event where we're exploring how Arduino are helping industrial applications come to life with their solutions. So we're joined today by Robbie. As you might have noticed, Robbie's very small and I don't like to be the <laughs> smallest person in the interview, so I've made sure that I'm not. So Robbie, tell us all about what you do at R2 sure. Labs. Hi. My name is Roby Lin. I'm the founder Roby, and CEO. Not Roby. 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 Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. No. You're a Star people, Wars character, aren't you? Uh, Roby Star Wars. Kenobi. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I've heard that one before, actually. Have you? Uh huh. Yeah. So I'm the founder and CEO of R2 Labs. Uh, we're a automation company based in Atlanta, Georgia. We build a software-first uh, robotics and automation control solution useful for industrial customers in manufacturing. Uh, it's called the RAC, R-A-C, R2 Autonomy Controller. We brought that for the demo here today. And basically what this allows customers to do is to use a younger existing workforce that they have to control or augment equipment assets using a familiar Python API that their workforce is already familiar with instead of ladder logic or something like that. So this is an industrial automation unit. You talk about younger people, very important yeah, younger yeah, people. Yeah. Most of our followers are younger. Yeah. So are you saying that this is normally in a, a traditional place? This is a place sure, of tradition. Sure. So it doesn't necessarily have, it's not an up-to-date place where people are working. So just explain how right. that works and what this would do normally and then why that Python younger mm -hmm, generation mm -hmm. thing is so key. Sure, sure. So. We call this a smart PLC, if you will. So yep. the, kind of the idea is we've taken what a normal PLC would do, programmable logic controller, which would be something, you know, that's kind of a legacy piece of hardware that's used right. in plants all over the world. Right. But so keyword, legacy. We're yes. talking about legacy equipment that's right. maybe been around for 20, 30 years, mm -hmm. doing its job, nobody looks at it because it just does its job every day, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden somebody comes along and says, we need to update that, bring this up, exactly. bring this in, exactly. into today. We want to today. use newer programming paradigms, we want to deploy AI models, we want to add there more we functionality, right. we want our younger workforce to be able to deal with it. So that's what this product is designed to solve. So right. we can do motion control, we can do IO control, we can do vision, uh, we can run AI models, all with this Python API. And I think most engineers, if not all engineers coming out of school today, already know how to write Python, but maybe they don't know how to operate on these legacy, let's say, yes, yes. control so, systems. So, so what is running inside a legacy? So, so not to frighten people off, what will be running inside a legacy system? So that, w that will be like what's called a PLC, a programmable right. logic controller. So it's just a bit of hardware. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, it, it accomplishes a similar task to this, but with fewer features. Yeah. And it is uh, kind of been the same for decades, right? And these are industry incumbents. They have a reliable product, but maybe it isn't the most up-to-date in terms of, you know, yeah. software and that type of thing. So yeah. this, we thought, okay, you know, our team, we're all software-minded folks, you know, we are familiar with Linux, we can do C++, we can do real-time system programming, all this type of thing that um, we thought would enable us to build a product that will be basically a jumping off point for companies that are either developing new equipment, augmenting existing equipment, something like that, and they want something that is modern and able to interface with all their hardware, control those assets, yes, and give them a way that their, their workforce loves and is familiar with. It's not proprietary. Yes. It's not outdated, it's modern, it's fresh, it is what they're already used to using. Excellent. So, all about retrofitting, and if you're doing retrofitting, the chances are the engineering force that you employ is under 45 and has never right. seen anything like this, thinks it's an antique, and go, what do I do with that? Yeah, so just to be clear, this is not the end. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I realise that. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's what we're talking about. Right, right, right. So they see this piece of equipment. Oh my God, this looks like it's from the 80s. It only has two megabytes of memory. How am I going to deal with this? Yep. Oh, but I'm already familiar with Linux. I can already write Python. Why can I not just do that, you know? But then if, you know, we're kind of taking that pre-integration step out. So they can buy this box, plug all their stuff into it, plug in their sensors, plug in their motors, plug in their actuators, program it in Python. So the system they doesn't get a change. UI. You right. can have your legacy system, mm -hmm. but you bring it up to date by bringing your box in, and that's where Arduino come in. Yeah, so Arduino provides an OEM component for us, in, which is inside of here. 
Uh, we use the Portenta machine control, one of the devices that serves as part of the real-time control layer for our entire solution. So our business, we build robotics and automation solutions for a range of industries. They could be agriculture. We have a case study here we're showing actually uh, an entire control system for an autonomous agricultural robot. So right. unfortunately so that's not, not animated. That's not a retrofit, but anyway, but yes, yeah, I understand. Yeah. yeah. So, so, right. So the retrofit is one so let's possibility. Not just, let's, not, let's not box you into just retrofit. Exactly. Exactly. You're up to date. New too. equipment as well. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so this was a new equipment build. This customer wanted to identify and automatically remove weeds from a field of lettuce crops. And um, this, they're based in Arizona. So they had basically a mechanical frame, an idea for what they wanted to do, but they needed a platform to control that that could take data from the cameras, it could control the motors, it could do the IO, it could send telemetry data, all these things. They wanted it Linux-based, Python programmable. We have just the product for you. So yeah. we actually deployed this with them. You can see, I mean, I don't know, probably can't see this on video, but basically, you know, we can identify what is a what is a weed, what's a... Yeah, there's uh, a whole lot bunch of crop. machine learning going on there, AI sure. going on. Right, right, right. So, that is application specific, obviously. I mean, I do want to highlight this as a platform. So, yeah. you know, the customer could be in automotive manufacturing. They could be in, I mean, sheet metal, whatever. You know yeah. what I mean? The idea is basically the same. They still want a modern, fresh, uh, software forward, I'll say, yep. control so, solution. So you're all about control systems, mm -hmm. be it retrofit, legacy equipment, mm -hmm. bringing the world mm -hmm. into the, bringing things into the modern world. Right, exactly. And you know that people have to have the, 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 the ceiling to get them to use a recent programming, because quite frankly, nobody ever programmed, pro programmed that in 1980. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you're yeah. also able to offer modern, modern type solutions in agriculture where you're doing the same thing and you're partnering with, with Arduino again. Yeah, so uh, maybe maybe I wasn't quite clear. So so this is a deployment of this system. That yes. that robot's a deployment no, of this system. No, this is system. just at yeah, the end. Yeah. This is, if you like, at the edge. Yeah, yeah. This demo that we're showing here, this is basically just, you know, showing what how we could control a roll-up door. Um, yeah. So we have it hooked up, you know, this has four servo controllers, but we have this hooked up single servo axis sensor on the door. So this is right. just kind of a simple demo, you know, here's our UI that shows. Yeah. So, uh, chart data charts. So we understand what you do. Yeah. We understand where, where, where you fit. Sure. But there was a reason why you chose Arduino. There yeah, was a reason absolutely. why you said we you know, we could go other, other yeah, ways, yeah, yeah. but we will go with Arduino. Yeah. Why was that? Okay, that's a great question. Because I think we and Arduino have a very similar way of thinking, which is we want uh, Arduino wants electronics and embedded systems to be democratized, right? They want people to be able to come in and build embedded stuff easily, simply with freely available documentation, libraries, et cetera, affordable tools. Easy compatibility and scalability. Sure, exactly, right. And so it like kind of, it, it creates a super broad customer base for them, obviously, but it also enables engineers to really do learning and, and build stuff easily, okay? So we thought, I mean, we're like, we want to do that, but for robotics and automation, we want yeah. companies to be able to augment or deploy new equipment easily, simply using stuff they're already familiar with, with open source tools, et cetera, et cetera. And so we thought, what better partnership could there be? You know, we have the same ethos as Arduino. We can use some of their products as OEM bits and then build up our software layer and everything else around that and kind of basically create like a, you know, advanced high level type, very focused solution for um, industry yep. using some of their stuff. And, you know, that message plays really well. I mean, I think people are frustrated, understandably so, with the state of automation systems, robotic systems. You know, they're proprietary, they're outdated. Yep. I mean, you know, you pay a lot of money for a tiny bit of memory. And, you know, it's stuff like that. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. Look, why, why does a PLC only have a few megabytes of memory, for example? You know what I'm saying? And so um, I think, you know, we kind of wanted to bring the modern software computing paradigms to yep. automation and robotics so, in that way. In summary, you're a robotics OEM. Your specialization is creating robotic applications, be it industrial, be it agriculture, mm -hmm. wherever it be. Right. You need a, so you're clever at that, but you need a partner inside the box that gives you that same compatibility, mm -hmm. that same scalability, exactly. that same ease of use, so mm -hmm. that you can go away and create amazing robots and create a huge customer base, helping them solve their problems. But you exactly. need somewhere in, inside the box who could help you give the platform to do that. Yes, to help us scale our platform. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Roby, may the force be with you.
Thank you very much. Appreciate that. <laughs>